Rubio for sponsoring this video and sending this out to me. They don't have any influence over my opinions of this product. But if you've been watching the channel, you know I've had the all-in-one 2.0 standby before. So I'm especially excited to see how this compares. Spin this thing around. Is that a Saturn V? Meh. The biggest piece and we've got accessories at the end here. And it looks similar design language to the all-in-one 2.0 soundbar, I'm gonna say. As I say, the look and feel is very much like the all-in-one 2.0 soundbar, pretty much the same materials, but you'll notice there's speaker grills along the top of this device, and if I flip this around, along the bottom. See those there, see those drivers? I do like the attention to detail with the rubber feet on this device, so you're not gonna get vibration from these downward facing speakers. Now, as I say, the reason why you've got grills along the top and bottom of the device is because you've got four vertical speakers. So you've got one firing upwards, one firing upwards along this side, and you've got another two on the bottom firing downwards. Now these vertical firing speakers are passive drivers only. And then you've got three front facing speakers across here, which are 50 watts each. And that's not even all of it. You've got a further two speakers along the side here, again, 50 watts. So one, two, three, four, five speakers are 50 watts. And these are the same drivers across the sides and the front. Input outputs across the rear, you've got the figure of eight power and ethernet port so you can stream across network as well as optical and USB type A as well as two HDMI ports, HDMI in as well as HDMI out with that audio return cable. The buttons have a rubbery silicone feel to them but are clickety clackety with that microphone in the middle. Looks clean. inside of a box. So we've got the remote, pretty much looks the same as again, the all-in-one sandbar. We've got some reading material I'm guessing here. Normally I'd say throw this away, but if you've never had a sandbar before, you may need to reference some of this material. We've got a HDMI cable with ethernet, a three pin UK power adapter, with a figure of eight at the end there. And we have also got a couple of batteries. And out of the box next, we've got some wall plugs and some screws for the wall plates because, yes, indeed, if I take this out here, get rid of that, get rid of the box, we have wall plates to hang your JBL soundbar from so it looks like it's floating in the air mounted on the wall. I do love bright colours. And if you haven't already noticed, this device is compatible with a Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth 4.2 to be exact, and Chromecast built in. It's compatible with uh, your favorite smart assistants from uh, Google and Amazon, and also works with Apple AirPlay as well as Dolby Atmos here as well. Digital optical out from the TV connector box here. I don't tend to use HDMI ER cables because I've always used optical inputs, but do bear in mind, if you want to hear Dolby True HD or Atmos effects, you will have to use a HDMI cable. So what is a multi-beam technology? As this soundbar uses it to cater and manipulate the sound from its speakers according to its surroundings. So picture this, you're in a room where you've got a hardwood floors, Floors? Floors, you've got no curtains, you've got just blinds, so plenty of materials that don't absorb the sound but simply bounce it off. When you calibrate this soundbar in that particular scenario, it will cater for those circumstances and compensate its speaker for that. In comparison, if you're in a room where you've got uh, rugs on the walls, you've got long thick curtains, you've got sofas, uh, carpets on the floors, that kind of stuff, plenty of things that will actually absorb the sound, each speaker will again compensate for the sound absorption adequately so you get a good 
experience. I also recommend when you're calibrating this device to walk outside the room and let it do its thing in an empty room because you don't want the yourself or other people that you've got in the room to interfere with the calibration as the sound waves are bouncing off uh, the various materials inside your room because you as a human will also affect uh, those beams being bounced back to it. When you want to calibrate your device for the room that you've just placed it in, simply hold down the HDMI button for about five seconds and it should start calibrating. And you'll hear those pul pulsating sounds and you'll see calibration on the display here, counting down to and it's at this point I'd recommend that you leave the room, leave it empty, so the sound bar can calibrate itself adequately for its surroundings. By default the bass is set at 3 but if you press the TV button down for 5 seconds and then volume down you can amend the bass level to whatever you need. So obviously level 1 is at the lowest and level 5 is at its punchiest. My mum's on friend face, my mum! <laughs> I've opened up another channel of communication with my mum. Isn't that good? No, it is not good. She's put down her current mood essential. I love how easily you can connect this thing to your smart assistant or you can cast directly to it. But as I say, I'm using Google, so play some hip hop. Obviously, I've just muted what I've just said so that it doesn't set off all your speakers while you're watching this video. So the question is, who should be buying this JBL 5.0 soundbar? Firstly, if you're gonna be using this for a secondary screen, maybe for the kids in a separate room, and you just want a broader soundstage, something better than the tinny speakers on a flat screen TV, and let's face it, manufacturers spend less than 5% on sound these days for those really, really flat TVs. So in that scenario, you're not probably gonna need this type of soundbar because let's face it, kids don't really care about Dolby Atmos or the fact that you can change the bass or the fact that it's got nine speakers, they just want fuller sound. So in that respect, there's probably cheaper soundbars out there for you. Secondly, if you're not an audiophile and you're just an average Joe who just wants better sound from their flat screen TVs, who doesn't have a whole lot of space for running wires to subwoofers or 5.1 surround sound behind, in front, to the side of you, then this is the soundbar to get. Its build quality is absolutely awesome, sound quality is good, good broad stand stage, and you have no wires. There's no need for a subwoofer. As you saw, it's plenty loud. It's too loud for me to keep it on max volume in the rooms that I have and there's no wires, as I say, to a 5.1 surround sound system. I'm not gonna say this is better than a 5.1 surround sound system, because if you've got the space, it may be worth going with that. But if you don't have the space, you don't wanna have wires trawling around, then this will be the next best thing. Try it out. Thirdly, if you are an audiophile and you listen to high quality, high resolution music, MP3s don't count by the way, and you want that fuller sound, but you don't have the space, as I say, for a subwoofer or that full 5.1 surround sound speaker setup, but you really want that awesome sound, do check this out. Really good sound quality, particularly if you can utilize high resolution audio files, either from your streaming service or across your network. And fourth, again, if you're an audio file and money's no object and you've got plenty of space, you probably should go for a full on surround sound speaker system. But I think for the money and the amount of less hassle you have with this thing, you shouldn't overlook this JBL 5.0 soundbar. <laughs> A 
would have liked this display behind this grill here to be bigger so that the text didn't have to scroll but i understand the speakers are here so i can see why it's only small but it would have been cool though obviously you're not really going to get to experience the dolby atmos sound coming at this thing because obviously dual channel sound that's been recorded with my camera and on youtube here but hopefully you got a glimpse of how good this jbl 5.0 soundbar is do let me know in the comment section down below if you got one of these what you think of the sound i think for how small this thing is compared to how much of a punch it packs i think it's really good and obviously depending on your budget you may want to go for this or maybe something cheaper depending on what your requirements are but as i say links as ever are down in the description box below thanks for watching have a wicked day and i'll see you next time